Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. The math puzzle of which is larger, e to the pi or pi to the e, is really, really classic. In fact, there are tons of videos with lots and lots of views on YouTube that tackle this subject already. But recently, I saw this paper, and I mean it's a very recent paper from May 2024 from the American Journal of Physics that answers this question, or compares these two numbers, I should say, using physics, in particular using the methods of thermodynamics. And I thought it'd be a great video subject, so here we are. Now, we're gonna use the following fact, and that is the change in entropy for a reversible system can be calculated be via the following equation. So we have delta S, where S is that entropy, so delta S is the change in entropy, is the integral from some initial temperature to some final temperature of dq over t, where t is the temperature and dq is some sort of infinitesimal change in heat. Okay, so let's see how we can use all of these ideas to, well, compare these two numbers. So we'll think about having an incompressible solid with a heat capacity of C and an initial temperature of pi. And we put that in contact with an ideal thermal reservoir where the temperature is E. And so obviously we know that pi is larger than E, so the heat is gonna flow from this solid into this thermal reservoir. But since this is a perfect heat sink, if you will, it'll collect all of the heat that is put off by this solid and the temperature over here will not change. So what happens is that the temperature over here of this solid will decrease from pi to E, whereas this doesn't change at all. Okay, so, well, we've got this equation for the change in entropy on the board, so we probably want to use that. So let's start by calculating the entropy of this solid, or I guess I should say the change in the entropy for this solid. So I'll call this delta S sub one, where I guess I'm using uh, the subscript one for the solid. Okay, so that's gonna be the integral from, well, the initial temperature, which is pi, up to the final temperature of E, of this dq, this infinitesimal change in heat. But given the setup that we have here, this dq is given by the heat capacity times the infinitesimal change in temperature. Okay, so we've got c dt over t. But that's a fairly simple integral. That's gonna give us c times the natural log of t evaluated between pi and e, which we can calculate out to be c times, well, the natural log of e, which we know to be equal to one, minus the natural log of pi. Okay, so there we've got it. We've calculated the change in entropy for this first thing, this incompressible solid. Hey there, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. While watching my videos is a great place to start, you get more out of learning by doing, and that's why I highly recommend you sharpen your skills with Brilliant. Step into a world where curiosity knows no bounds and learning is an adventure. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Each lesson comes with hands-on problem solving so you can truly learn. It's been proven to help you learn six times more effectively than just watching videos. Courses are designed by an award-winning team from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. You'll find yourself learning problem-solving skills instead of memorizing equations, which can then help you learn to be a better thinker. Brilliant can also be easily incorporated into your daily activities. With fun lessons you can do on your phone, tablet, or computer in just minutes a day. They have lots of great courses on coding to try. You can start with thinking and code and then work your way through the lessons for more complex ideas. But we're scientists here, so don't take my word for it. You should test it for yourself. 
Treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn for a 30-day free trial and 20% off your annual subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so now let's move on to calculate the change in entropy for this heat sink. So I'll denote that by delta S sub two. But now we're not exactly gonna use an integral for this part of the calculation. Well, underlying it all, there is an integral, but I think it's a little bit easier to do it without the integration. What we'll think about is this capital T in this formula, well, for this setup is a constant. And it's a constant because notice that the temperature of our heat sink over here never changes like we discussed before. So since it's a constant, well, it should be a constant multiplier of our final calculation for this entropy. And so what we're really doing is integrating this dq, this infinitesimal change in heat. But this infinitesimal change in heat is really given by the heat capacity of the original solid and then its initial temperature and its final temperature. So putting that all together, we have a C times, let's see, it's gonna be pi minus E all over E for, that's our change in entropy for this system. Okay, but then notice that this can be calculated fairly easily, and that's gonna give us C times pi over E minus one. But now we're very close to being done. Now we're gonna look in the ch at the change of entropy in the entire system. So I'll write that as delta S, and that'll be equal to delta S sub one plus delta S sub two. But by second law of thermodynamics, we know that entropy only increases. So we know that this has to be positive. But then, well, let's put in all of the parts that we have. So we've got delta S one, that's gonna be C uh, times one minus natural log of pi plus delta S2, that's gonna be C times pi over E minus one. And like I said, that needs to be bigger than zero. Now let's observe that we can divide both sides of this equation by C and well, that won't change anything because the heat capacity is positive. So needless to say, the inequality will go in the same direction. Furthermore, we can have this one minus one cancel and then we'll be left with pi over E minus the natural log of pi is bigger than zero. So then, well, we can move some things across and we'll quickly be left with pi um, is bigger than the natural log of pi to the E, where I use the fact that E times the natural log of pi is natural log of pi to the E by bringing that exponent inside. And then finally, as a last step, we can exponentiate both sides of this equation and we'll be left with e to the pi is bigger than pi to the e. But that's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to determine which one was larger, pi to the e or e to the pi, and we've done it. And that's a good place to stop.